Hi, I'm Jory Vinicora, harpsichordist, and I'm here to talk today about works which are frequently performed on the piano, but were originally intended for the harpsichord, and um, what pianists might want to know about performing them on the piano. I find that for any pianist who would like to play Bach beautifully, or who maybe even wishes to venture away from Bach, discover earlier music or uh, music of the time of Bach, but from France, I think for that pianist, getting a hold of a harpsichord, working with some somebody, perhaps studying this a bit, I think it's a very useful thing. But even for the pianist who will sit down for a minute or two at a harpsichord and play one of the familiar Bach works, finds very quickly that the instrument will not respond to him or her as the piano will. And I think it's so interesting to learn how we play expressively at the harpsichord and what can that bring to the modern day pianist. Um, and I think it can bring a great, great deal, a new color, a new sound palette. So I recommend this very strongly to any musician, to any pianist who has access to a harpsichord. One thing I can tell you is that unlike the piano, which has a double escapement mechanism, in other words, for everybody who's uh, tried the piano at home, if you very slowly depress the key of a piano, you end up with nothing. Here on the harpsichord, as I gradually depress the keys, I can feel the string really bending under the finger. And then, no matter how gently and gingerly I depress the key, the string will sound. Sitting at the piano, from my point of view, uh, there is a great deal more physicality required to get sound. On the harpsichord, I frequently feel that we can really let our fingers do the talking and speak through the music. This provides a great deal of information about how we will perform music on the harpsichord. If I were to approach one of the uh, most iconic of Bach's pieces, the first invention, C major, how might I approach this differently at the harpsichord than at the piano? Interesting, I think at the piano, my first concern would be to shape the first phrase. So within the subject fragment, the first part. I just want to know the shape of the rising fourth and then the third switch fall. And I would separate before the next part. On the harpsichord, I might find a precise translation of what I just played at the piano to be somewhat unsatisfying. So I still find the result very flat. I might begin to think of this more in terms of speaking articulation. The ascending consecutive notes are fairly legato, and then the thirds, for instance. And suddenly, although this isn't necessarily a final version, there is some dimension, there is some layering to the playing. And this is the beginning, at least, of how to make the harpsichord speak as well as to sing. Articulation allows the music to speak. Um, we see these small details, it's the punctuation in our sentences, it's the ebb and flow of the words, and terribly important. Um, on the piano, such articulation as I did might quickly feel rather precious or over-refined. At the harpsichord, it feels like a necessity. So many of us who studied piano, we learned that there are two basic sorts of articulation. We either play legato, so that one note is connected to the other, or there is staccato, notes are separated from each other. I would like to recommend to pianists to think of a wider palette of articulations. In Baroque music, I very, very rarely see 
the need or the opportunity for an extreme staccato, what I uh, perhaps impolitely call the hot plate staccato, in other words, <laughs> touch, and, touch and off. We so often hear the staccato, play separate, play staccato, as being a solution for how to play contrapuntal music. If you play a Bach fugue, you know, God forbid, we have to hear five minutes of staccato playing. And this just isn't the case if we think at the harpsichord or at the piano of the articulation, every subject, every line has its innate and inherent articulation. We do hear the individual voices. Glenn Gould, who is such a polarizing figure, yet at the same time, this is one of the great things he brought to piano playing. Uh, when Glenn Gould was playing fugues, you did not have the usual texture of going along and then suddenly there is one voice being played much louder than the other so that the listener can know that the subject has returned. He articulated much as harpsichordists were already doing and we can hear the layers of voices.